Hello there and welcome back to a new video. So the US elections are over as you know and I want to thank the American people for the extraordinary honor of being elected your 47th president and your 45th president. Now, probably on account of being shot at multiple times during his campaign, while also being called racist, fascist, and anti-democratic to ever run for presidency, uh, Trump doesn't give a lot of interviews to the mainstream media, uh, which Kamala Harris does a lot. But he has turned to uh, YouTubers, podcasts, and comedy shows. Modi. Yeah. India. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's a friend of mine. He's great. He's the nicest. India. Yeah. This is for you. Oh, good. Well, but on the outside, he looks like he's your father. He's the nicest. Total killer. He's the nicest human being. But we had a couple of occasions where somebody was threatening India. I said, yeah. let me help. I'm very good with those people. Let me help. I will do it. I will do it. Then I will do anything necessary. We've defeated them for hundreds of years. Wow. He was talking about a certain country. Yeah. You can probably get yeah. 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 I can't fathom which. You know that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But I said, whoa, what happened there? <laughs> <laughs> this clip from the interview he gave the podcast Flagrant has gone viral for all the right reasons. And both of these world leaders have shared similar sentiments throughout their tenures as world leaders. And it really made me think about this friendship between Narendra Modi and Donald Trump, who are long-standing contemporaries in geopolitics, and how it would impact both the countries and also the world. So that is what we will look at in this video. Both Modi ji and Donald Trump belong to the right wing and they had to face a lot of challenge because of that. But they both have wildly different histories. If you take Donald Trump, he was never a politician but a businessman. He never really had any political ambitions. He was against becoming a president, if you will. But it all changed when uh, Obama challenged him and that is how he gets into the whole business of becoming a president. Modi on the other hand have been in the political sphere almost all his life. He has been a Swayam Sevak in RSS for the most part of his life and he has held public office since 2002. Now both of them have been called fascists or harboring fascist tendencies for the longest time. Trump has been called a sexist, a racist, a homophobic and a xenophobic. While Modi has been challenged along the lines of casteism, communal uh, disharmony, uh, instigation of riots and so on. Looks like a very dangerous friendship if you look at it in that way. Uh, these accusations and challenges are much, much, much less now, but at the beginning of their governments or the beginning of their offices, this was quite a problem. Now, if we look at their policies in general, uh, Modiji is focused on developing India and making it a world superpower. Modi government is very vocal and active about anti-corruption, uh, anti-illegal economic activities, uh, counter-insurgency and counter-terrorism, and also development. They have driven a significant amount of FDI into this country in the last uh, eight to nine years, by, while also focusing on developing the infrastructure of the nation for its people. Trump also uh, thinks about along the same lines. He wants to put America first rather than folk, rather than distracting themselves with the world affairs and getting themselves involved in the economic and military action in different parts of the country he wants to focus all his attention and efforts on the domestic matters or resolving the issues inside the country and 
both leaders had to tackle with the exceptional <laughs> crisis brought about by COVID-19. The Modi government took full advantage of the COVID situation, if you ask me. They were able to regulate and put in place a lot of policy reforms, which is still going on. The development of COVID vaccine in India was also a great development, which, which really bolstered the place of India in the world, because we were able to help a lot of countries with our COVID vaccine at the right time. And all the developments of Modi was also praised by Trump in 2020 in the Namaste Trump event. But the Trump government, on the other hand, definitely took a hit. Uh, he lost the 2020 election solely on the basis of his dismal COVID response. And now the next election cycle is here. Uh, the Biden administration has failed at almost everything that they criticized the Trump government for. Uh, their COVID response was even worse than the Trump's COVID response. Their immigration policy has created so much problems. The inflation in the country is at the highest. The economy is in such a crisis. Three separate wars have begun in the Biden era, which have a direct or an indirect link to the America. Russian-Ukraine war, which was predisposed by the NATO involvement, the Israel-Palestine issue, and also the Afghan war. That is how the Taliban overtook the Afghan soil again. And there are also a lot of cultural and social uh, aspects of life being affected in the US under the Democrat. Trump is definitely capitalizing on all of that. And in this context of this uh, collaboration or partnership between Modi and Trump would look like. Well, there are three key areas to focus on. One is trade, second is immigration, and third is security. When it comes to trade, what we have to understand that both these leaders are nationalists. So they are always going to put their country's interest at first before anything else. Like I said before, Trump adopts an America first policy where he believes in free trade rather than fair trade. When India, which is a very big abuser, uh, he happens to be coming to meet me next week. And Modi, he's you're fantastic. I mean, fantastic man. These, a lot of these leaders are fantastic. You have to understand one thing. They're dealing, they're 100%. These people are the sharpest people. They're not a little bit backward. They're not, they are at the top. You know the expression, they're at the top of their game and they use it against us. But India is very tough. It basically means that there is a concept of fair trade uh, in opposition to free trade because a lot of these underdeveloped or developing countries cannot be kept put at par with the developed countries when it comes to trade. So these uh, world powers would have to give these underdeveloped or developing countries some leeway to be able to trade with them and to become advanced or develop themselves. And that was called the generalized system of preferences, which was created in the early 70s. That would allow developing countries to sell to the US without tariffs on a number of different products. Everything from Buffalo Hyde to AC Motors. And India was part of this GSP because uh, consecutive administrations uh, felt that it was in their benefit that India is growing and developing. But uh, Trump removed India from the GSP list in 2018. And that was because India was not opening its market uh, to the American-made products. 
rather we had very high tariff rates uh, for american products to come into india trump does not believe in this exceptionalism policy that was adopted by america where america felt that they had to help and support a lot of other nations economically uh, politically to become democracies and to grow as democracies and that does not mean that trump doesn't want india to grow or develop it's just that the the trade deals are going to be much tougher given the policies of import substitution or higher tariff rates for foreign goods imposed by the modi government and that is for pushing the atmanirbhar bharat scheme where we want to develop our own industries and become self sufficient with it immigration is going to be just another very important thing in the trump administration as we know trump wants to reduce immigration as much as he can and india is the largest nation from where uh, migrants go to the us and a lot of them are from the technology sector and also from the medical sector trump is all about closing down borders and putting an end to illegal migration and indians are also a major part of illegal migrants uh, going into the usa the trump administration had made it more difficult for indians or for any foreign nationals is just it just happens that indians are the most foreign nationals who come there to work to go there and work under the h1b visa that is the work permit they get and the students also greatly suffered under the trump administration laws to go there and pursue higher education it is already very difficult for uh, people to migrate to the usa and to become permanent residents there and it it's going to be tougher if trump comes into power but if you really ask me i don't know how that would be a problem for india because india itself is trying to become a world superpower and the most important thing that we require for that to happen is talent or human resources so i think the focus of indian governments in the coming years would be to bring back talent or skilled individuals into back into the country so that they can focus more on developing our nation so in that way stricter immigration policy in the us and other countries are actually going to benefit india in the long run because more people would be incentivized to come back to india and settle here and and make our <laughs> economy much more powerful What do you think about that? Please let me know in the comment section. Security is something that India and America have uh, have always agreed upon. India has truly become self-sufficient in the defense sector and that is because of a lot of support from the US government. India and USA are very active. and stringent about uh, counter terrorism and counter insurgency and trump is known to stand out because he doesn't like to start wars or provoke wars and uh, he wants a uh, demilitarization of most of the lands controlled by the us that is afghanistan <laughs> to begin with uh, so we can see a lot more of that if he comes to power India and America seems to have a lot of common enemies so we will continue to support each other in the defense sector and also a lot of security issues are also related to the immigration policies or illegal migrants so a lot of people have already been deported from America to India and that will continue and a lot and a lot less people will get asylum in America in the coming years and if you take india's role in shaping geopolitics india has uh, exceptionally great ties with most of the countries of the world be it developed developing conflicted peaceful and what not 
people would want to side with india no matter if they are developed or not for the greater benefit we have been able to create that vibe <laughs> throughout india politics india's goal is to become really resilient to terrorism really resilient to most of the challenges that we face and to become a superpower in the coming years and i think that this uh, really great friendship between modi and trump would actually pave the way for that so let's hope for that Let me know in the comment section what you think. Please hit the like button and share it with somebody else. Subscribe for more videos like this. Until we meet next time. Bye bye. Well, it goes without saying that I don't have a sponsor yet. But no to worry. I will sponsor my own video. More precisely, my book with. This is the first book that I wrote. It's a realistic fiction novel. about 14s in a city enmeshed in a life of drugs love violence and chaos a tale of isolation and desperation one feels among known strangers in an unknown city well this book is available on amazon and flipkart the links will be in the description i will also share the link to the video trailer of the book so check them out and now back to the video